Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about Waiting for Tom Hanks by Carrie Winfrey. Waiting for Tom Hanks was on my most anticipated reads list. I believe it was on the first one that I did in 2019. Um, could have been on the second one. I don't know. <laughs> you guys can probably keep better track of this stuff than I can. But it is a romantic comedy, contemporary romance. It is about a woman named Annie who is obsessed with romantic comedies and is bound and determined never to settle and to only wait for the perfect man, the man that she has dubbed Tom Hanks. She's particularly obsessed with Nora Ephron movies like You've Got Mail and Sleepless in Seattle, both of which starred Tom Hanks. And so that is her ideal mate. That is the man she is waiting for. And the reality of it is <laughs> uh, Annie's not really living life to its fullest because she has such strict and specific ideas for how her life and specifically this romance of hers will evolve. So she is a screenwriter. She lives in a house with her uncle. Her dad and her mom are both deceased. And she spends a lot of time at the local coffee shop where her best friend, Chloe, is a barista. And she's writing this romantic comedy screenplay, and she only ever talks about romantic comedies. Meanwhile, this best friend is, of course, the cynical comic relief best friend that you need in a romantic comedy. And they get the news that a movie is coming to town. They live in Columbus, Ohio, so as you can imagine, it's probably not easy to be a screenwriter <laughs> or obsessed with how some some aspect of Hollywood culture and live in Columbus, Ohio. But they do hear that a that a movie's coming to town. It's actually a romantic comedy being filmed in their very neighborhood, and Chloe decides that Annie needs to go work on set. And the movie stars, you know, the hottest most eligible Hollywood bachelor, Drew Danforth. Yes, Drew Danforth. And upon meeting him, Annie knows right away that he is anything but her Tom Hanks. He's not nice enough. He's not modest enough. He's not funny enough. Like, he's just not it. What do you have here? You have a romantic comedy. This book is very whimsical. It's perfect for people who also love romantic comedies, who are going to know what this main character is talking about. She talks about romantic comedies incessantly. I mean, it's const there's something about a romantic comedy constantly on this character's lips. And so don't read this book if you don't know anything about romantic comedies. You'll be lost the entire way through it. But um, like I said, it is whimsical. It's fun. It's cute. It's, it's meant to be very light. This is a very light read. Very, and by light, I mean that it's not, I don't mean it's simple reading. I don't mean that it's, you know, elementary. I mean that it's, you cannot take this book seriously. I don't mean that as a bad thing. I just mean that I don't think its intention is to be taken very seriously. I think that this book's intention is to have fun. Now, whether you, you, you find this fortunate or unfortunate, I didn't go into this book necessarily wanting to have fun. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I'm not an idiot. The book is called Waiting for Tom Hanks. It's got whimsy in the title. It's, it's got whimsy written all over it. I'm walking away from it rating it three stars. And I'm doing that because I think that the book is what it says that it is. I think that it's a, a decent debut from a romance author that has a lot of potential in the genre. And it's, it's chocked full with pop culture references and, you know, certain kinds of humor and endearments that some people will be very, very attracted to. But I didn't formulate a lot of respect for the main character and that kind of stood in my way of really loving this book. Like I said, she does talk about romantic comedies constantly to the point where I was like, okay, 
I have seen them all. I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't need it spelled out for me every single time. And if I had heard Tom Hanks or Greg Kinnear or Bill Pullman be brought up one more time, I was going to lose my mind. Uh, did I find it irritating? I did. Did I hate it? No. I just, I didn't take it seriously. Um, I'm, I've already said I'm a pretty serious person. It's hard for me to read something this light and feel good about it because I don't have a lot of time to read anything and I usually want the thing that I read to be very meaningful in some way. I, I call it a, a positive characteristic or a ne negative characteristic, but I do always try to assign meaning to something that I've read. And I couldn't do that in this case. I, I didn't have a lot of respect for the heroine, which I've already mentioned, but part of the reason is because she's she came across as really immature. So I'm going to set this down now because I've been holding it way too long. Um, I don't have a problem with all of my romance heroines or any of my romance heroines having a lot of naivete. I don't expect them to always know the ways of the world. Like, there's a good chunk of the romance genre built on naive women. So it's not that she's naive that gets under my skin. It's, it's quite frankly, immaturity. And uh, this woman, though I don't know that it's ever explicitly stated, she's, we know she's graduated high school. We know she has a college education and a college degree in film studies. She's obviously old enough to drink alcohol. I mean, this is a woman that I would assume is somewhere around the age of 24. However, her behavior and her mannerisms and her thought processes, I mean, this is a girl, like, I would assign these sort of mental reactions and the the conclusions that she reaches and the decisions that she makes. I would assign all of those things to someone who's 16 to 18 years old. This is not a woman that I can imagine having gone to college and graduating summa cum laude and I mean, which is mentioned in the book. So there's just this immaturity that I couldn't let go of. That's probably a me thing because I do try to assign some sort of meaning and, and some level of seriousness to everything that I read. And this book is just not intended to do that. It's just so read this, pick up this book on a beach and read it and have fun and then forget about it and move on. Like that's, I kind of feel like that's what you have to do. But there's a lot of back and forth. Um, there's a lot of fickle. She's very fickle and wishy-washy. And she's that kind of girl that's like, no, you know what? I don't want you and this can't happen. And then the next morning she's trying to track him down because she just wants to see him and maybe kiss him. Even though, no, this can't happen. Like, there's just a lot of emotional immaturity that... Like, Tom Hanks is probably the, what I would consider the epitome of emotional maturity. Uh, like, Tom Hanks would, like, be so annoyed with this girl. Tom Hanks wouldn't give this girl the time of day. I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. I found the heroine hard to tolerate. I found her friendship with Chloe hard to tolerate. I mean, these are two girls that act like middle school girls. And there was a lot of redundancy and repetition and the conversations that these characters had with each other, they had with each other repeatedly. Like, I don't feel like the book was moving forward or constantly progressing. I feel like the book was spinning its wheels most of the time until we arrived at the conclusion. I will say that Drew Danforth, the main uh, love interest or the hero of this particular romance novel, um, is a great guy. I mean, I liked Drew Danforth from the get-go, and I don't understand 
how this became a enemies to lovers or a hate to love romance because Drew is perfectly likable, you know, and, and, and the book is written in first person and I just feel like maybe that's part of the problem or where some of the problems lie is that in a first person narrative, you better hope or you better believe that I want to feel the exact same way that the character feels because it's first person because I'm inside their head. Like if they can't convince me to feel the way that they do and I'm inside their head reading every single one of their thoughts, then there's a really big issue. And the whole time I never felt like this heroine. I felt like she judged people unfairly. I felt like she was immature. I felt way more loyalty to the, the people that she disliked. It was just, that's the seriousness of my problem with the book. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to judge it too harshly because again, um, I don't think it's supposed to be something. I'm giving it three stars to not judge it too harshly. Um, if I were nitpicking the shit out of it, I would probably rate it lower than that, to be honest with you. If I was taking into consideration, you know, the technical issues, the, the problems with, you know, reader character connection and, and things like that. I mean, I would probably rate it lower, but for the book that it is, it's just a three star. I will also mention that this book is clean. It's not sexually explicit in the least. I think there's one or two mentions of naughty words uh, shared in jest between friends. Um, but for the most part, this is a clean romance. It's it'll it'll survive and sell on cuteness alone it's got a perfect title like this the title of this but this is a five star title hands down regardless of what happens in the book this is a five star title people see this title i mean one of the things that romance readers at least contemporary romance readers love that i found is a connection to reality because it's a it's a fantastical story a romance is a fantastical story and it is sometimes they are hard to believe sometimes we're so jaded with real life and real relationship problems that a romance novel can be a little bit difficult to to grasp and so what a romance reader like myself loves to see in contemporary romance are instances of pop culture are instances in real life any character that talks about a love of a television show that's that I've you know seen I mean that's how you build connection with your character and this book is chocked full of that stuff it is it definitely doesn't do that wrong at all so the book is waiting for Tom Hanks by Carrie Winfrey again I'm gonna say it's an okay debut novel it's great for a beach day it's great if you want something fun and light and easy and if you're not a hardcore erotic romance reader, <laughs> because there's none of that in here, um, you know, all of those things would make this a really great book for you to read. If we are of the same mind and you like things a little bit more serious or you want to find meaning in everything that you read or you want to walk away from a book having felt like you've accomplished something or that you're a better person having read it, Maybe not the book for you, but I, Carrie Winfrey is somebody that I would certainly give another chance. So there you have it. My thoughts on one of my most anticipated reads of 2019, Waiting for Tom Hanks. If you've read this book, let me know what you thought. Let me know if you wanted to read this book and my comments swayed you in one direction or the other. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon.